Good morning to you at home and a big hello to Dan Bardell, Flex and Zach Jalab who join us in the studio this morning. We are going to start today with Arsenal and Leandro Trossard is having a medical this morning after a deal was agreed with Brighton for the forward. Now the fee is an initial £20 million plus add-ons. It could end up reaching £27 million. He's going to sign a four and a half year contract today. Arsenal have the option to extend that deal as well by a further year. This one accelerated quite quickly yesterday and it will probably get sorted out and done and dusted today. Dan, how impressed have you been that Arsenal have moved so quickly on this? Yeah, I'd describe it as an opportunistic signing from Arsenal. I think obviously they've spent a lot of time chasing Mudrick. I actually think this is a better signing for Arsenal. I think he covers all the front four positions. Some would argue it doesn't fit in with Arsenal's transfer strategy. I've seen a few Arsenal fans saying that on, on social media, but you know they've, they've done this this way because they feel that this can aid them in the title race. I think this is a signing that doesn't hinder their title bid in any way at all. It can only help them. So I think it ticks all the boxes as a signing. I think Arsenal, they've been really good with what they've done in, in transfer windows gone by the last two or three. I think everyone's been really impressed with what Arsenal have done. Fair play to Brighton as well, because they've got a good price. I think they had that option where they could have exercised another year on his contract to 2024. So actually the price is probably good from both teams' perspectives. I would say, and I just think he'll, he'll help Arsenal. He's played most of his games as a number 10 for Brighton. Brighton playing a very fluid way. I imagine he'll line up in plenty of different positions for Arsenal. He's got that versatility. I think it's a great signing, one that helps them. Well, let's just get the Brighton perspective because the head coach, Roberto De Zerbi, has been talking to the media this morning and he's just been speaking. Let's hear from him now. Um, obviously, the Android Trossard's deal to Arsenal isn't done yet, but... Would you agree this is a deal which is good for Brighton, good for Arsenal and also good for the player? I don't know. Uh, the situation was uh, difficult, I think, because uh, I understood that he wanted uh, to leave. Mm, I'm sorry for the, the last period because uh, I prefer uh, uh, the people when are clear. Not when there is some uh, different uh, <coughs> comportament, different behaviors. Uh, but um, we will see. I, I, I think we are uh, anyway uh, a good team, and we can play um, well with uh, Leo or without Leo. Do you have any regrets and will you look to replace him with another player in this window? I think in the transfer market window, always you can, uh, you can improve, always you can buy new players. Uh, but um, we are at a good level now. The players uh, in squad um, are very, very good players. And it's not uh, so easy to improve this squad. Uh, but if I think uh, Tony and the, the club, if uh, will uh, will uh, will be the, the possibility to improve the squad, I think uh, we will do something. Brighton fans will also want to know about Casado. They're wondering about him. What would you say to any club in the Premier League, like Chelsea, who want to sign Casado? I tifosi vogliono sapere la situazione Caicedo, cosa risponderesti se un, un club come si parla ad esempio del Chelsea si approcciasse per Caicedo? Uh, but I don't know, I think uh, Caicedo it's very important for us. It's difficult to change uh, with another player now in uh, inside of the season. Uh, I hope uh, he finished the season with us. But uh, you know, in the transfer market, it's always difficult to give uh, you one one uh, um, answer, no. And uh, when there are uh, any some big team, they want uh, one our player is a is a good news for us. Uh, the best solution is uh, he can finish the season with us. Uh, and uh, in the summer, next summer, uh, 
for him is is better change team. You think Casado will leave Brighton in the summer? I don't know, but uh, if Casado will continue to to play like this, uh, like uh, the last games, uh, it's possible he can leave the in another team. Roberto De Zerbi there talking in the last few minutes to Sky Sports News. Finishing that uh, that clip, they're talking about Moise Caicedo after the Athletic reported that Chelsea had had a bid turned down for him. We're told that Brighton have no intention of selling him this month, but it seemed like the head coach was perhaps leaving the door open for him to move in the summer. Um, the main talking point from that news conference was Leandro Trossard, the, the Brighton head coach, disappointed to lose him. But he said it's difficult to replace these players in the squad in January and I guess not just because January is a difficult month but because Brighton are doing so well with the current crop of players that they have and remember that Trossard hasn't played for the last couple of games. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I mean, they've done such a fantastic job, Brighton, the fact that they've been able to kind of, if a player does go, and they've done this for years now, if a player does move on, they're able to find a, another guy, recruit another guy for a, a very small fee quite normally um, and, and because of the coaching, because of the training that they're doing, uh, do a fantastic job at kind of replacing them. We've seen them be pretty well, do or do pretty well without uh, without um, Trossard in the squad, and that just goes, that just speaks dev uh, speaks loads about how well they do in that sense of recruiting new players or getting people to play different positions, and and suddenly they're, they're now a guy who can play left wing or right wing or centre midfield or, or striker and add more strings to their bow. Um, yeah, I mean Brighton have done this and dealt with this numerous times, and I think look, it's a, it, the guy the guy's contract was coming to an end, uh, uh, towards an end at the end of this season. They've got a fee that they're happy for. He's going to be happy going to a, a team that could win the Premier League come the end of the season. I think everybody overall is, is kind of happy with the way this deal's ended up. For Brighton, I mean, they extract the most amount of money that they can, usually. Ben White, uh, Kukurea, Eve Basuma. Have they extracted the most that they could possibly get with this fee rising to £27 million? I think they have, given the contract position that Trossard's in, and I think they have, considering the breakdown in relationship with De Zerbi and himself, when you're left with an unhappy player, a player who, from De Zerbi's side, is saying, he's saying he didn't give assurances that he wanted to be there. We saw some statements released from Trossard's agent mm -hmm. saying that wasn't quite right. The truth is probably somewhere in between with a lot of conversations that we're not privy to, but what the facts are is that there was a breakdown in, in communication, a breakdown in relationship. And when that happens and you've got a player like Trossard, who is a valuable member of the team, who is a player who does have sell-on value, maybe less sell-on value than he would normally because he's, like I said, coming to the end that contract as well. But um, I do think they've managed to, to get every last pound, euro, pence <laughs> out of him because, and that's what Brighton do. You know, we, yeah. we, we spoke on Good Morning Transfers and Transfer Talk in the last window when it was Mark Kukurea. You know, right up until maybe the day before he was going to go or the day before, Brighton were actually, you know, putting out official statements saying he's our player, sort of going nowhere unless we say so. Um, and again, they sold for their price. They did the same, like you said, with Yves Bissouma as well. Ben White, 50 million. So this is not something they're, that, they're, that they're new to. This is not something that we're new to. It's not something that Brighton fans um, are new to, actually. And it's testament to them, actually. They don't just let... The, the, the big six, in inverted commas, come in and just take their players. Those, mm. those days are gone for a lot of teams outside of that top six. You can't just bully teams anymore. And I think it's testament uh, to Brighton that they managed to do this consistently. Yeah, their fans must have full trust in their hierarchy at their club because there's always a contingency with Brighton. They've got their stalwarts within the playing staff, Lalana, Dunk, Solly March, players that have been there for a few years. So they've got their, their stalwarts there. But then players come and go but they just seem to fluidly be replacing it not affect them and if anything Brian are better they lose all these players they've lost Basuma yeah. you know Mwepu had to, had to retire unfortunately that was that was really tragic for him that that, that had to happen but then Kaiseido just just comes in and maybe arguably does, does a better job than, than what Basuma was doing and De Zerbi comes in and he's built on what Potter's done and perhaps yeah. even you know you would say he's doing a better Good job than Potter one, the foundations are always there in Brighton and there's always a contingency <laughs> so the way they run is just absolutely incredible something to marvel at yep that's what happens when everyone at the club is aligned I guess when it's from the top down to the down to the head coach 
Um, from the Arsenal point of view, they were obviously originally after Mudrick at, mm. at the start of the window. Now, given the fee they were going to pay for Mudrick, he would have been a, a starter. So, Trossard coming in, is that is that a different situation for him? Um, I reckon so. I think, look, Arsenal have something uh, going really well at the moment with Martinelli on the left, Saka on the right, Odegaard in the middle. Um, what they didn't want to do is get to the end of the season and think, OK, um, we've had an injury to one of these players possibly and we haven't got the, the depth for it uh, to, to, re to replace them. And Trossard gives them that depth, it adds to it. And that's when you look at what Arsenal competing with, the, the likes of Manchester City, um, they are up against huge money and huge, huge players for huge fees. Um, and so Trossard, when he's compared to all three of these guys, uh, has has decent has decent numbers to, to be comparable with. Um, and he can kind of play on either side. If you need him on the left, he'll play there. He's had, had a great time uh, at Brighton doing that. If you need him to play through the middle or behind the striker, he can do that fantastically well. Um, or, or on the right, uh, uh, if, if desperate. Look, he's not he's not Mudrick in the sense in the sense that this is a guy who his future could be Ballon d'Or levels, as, as people have said, or or that he is maybe as quick as Mudrick is. Um, but we know that he is Premier League proven. We know that he's Premier League quality. Um, and I think right now in this situation where Arsenal are, they've not spent a, a huge amount of money. It's a, it's a fee which I think they're going to be over the moon with. And we've spoken about Arsenal many times where, OK, if they don't get that first target, they're more than willing to, to go for, for number two. And that normally works out pretty well. Look at um, the likes of Gabby Jesus and how well he started the season. Um, and so, and so, yeah, I think, look, Trossard, while he isn't maybe the exact same player as Mudrick, is actually maybe better for this season yeah. uh, with what they want to do going on to try and win the Premier League. Uh, you talk about this season then, so is Trossard the signing that gives Arsenal the, the depth, that one extra player that can win them the title? I think you'd have to say yes. He's, he's somebody who's definitely going to add to what they're trying to do. That experience of being able to play in the Premier League is, is massive. Um, and we've been saying about Arsenal, about once they've missed out on, on, on Mudrik, what's going to be the next plan? Mm. And they've had one straight away. I mean, it's an opportunity that arose, of course. They may not have had that at the top of their list, but they've shown that they can execute deals quickly and go straight in. Money wasn't a problem for them. You know, they put the money down for Mudrik. So now with, with add-ons, you know, potentially spending 27 million on Trossard, still money left over. And if you're an Arsenal fan, you're looking at it right across the front four. You've got Smithrow. Emma Smith Rowe is coming back from a long term injury. He's looking like he's going to get back into the fold. Mm -hmm. You've now got uh, Leandro Trossard to add to that. Potentially, midfield, that's probably an issue. If, if there's an injury to Thomas Party, that's an issue. But also, if you think about it, they still need a little bit more. But it's a good start. I still think, sorry to come in, I still think that if Arsenal do pick up midfield injuries, and I, I've questioned that on this show previously, I do think they're so well stocked at the back. That if they need a defender to step into midfield, Ben White, Zinchenko, yeah. I think they'll potentially do that and, and still be OK, rather than turn into Laconga or El Nene. So I actually think Arsenal are pretty well set now. They've got Reese Nelson as well in, in the front options. Mm -hmm. I know he's been injured, but when he, when he came in for the game against Forrest for Saka, he scored a couple of goals and looked, looked very lively. Arsenal are well set and they're in an absolutely incredible position. Arsenal fans will be excited, I'm sure. <laughs> Just on Trossard, they'll be wanting to push that deal through by midday so that he can be available to play in the game against Manchester United on Sunday, live on Sky Sports.